Yeah, let's get the rest of them. We can. We just got orders from Chief Heinemann. He says secure perimeter, surround building, and wait. Wait? For what? I don't know. Some bullshit special unit. The Feds. The DEA. I play a, a character. His name is um, Detective Jerry Lambert. He's the new kid on the block. And Bill Paxton had been in a couple of Jim Cameron films and a, a few things I'd seen. He was just so funny and so outrageous and just so didn't care about you know, putting out this huge performance, so it was fun. So I went in to meet him and uh, I put on this suit that I thought maybe the character would wear. I, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll go in with an L I'm in a costume. I don't want these directors to have to stretch their imagination too much, you know. So I went in, we had a great meeting. Yeah, it's a and really, um, just a good rapport, it was just a good vibe and I felt like it went really well. And I expected to be called back to, to read for the part. Two days later, I found out I had an offer which really thrilled me. That, that meant a lot to me. That meant that the director had met me, he knew my previous work, and I mean, he had seen Near Dark and Alien 7, and he just said, yeah, I want, I want Bill Paxton. And that, that's the greatest thing an actor can have going into a movie. Bill Paxton, he's got the energy of a government mule. I'll handle it. PR's my specialty. Feds just said word they want your ass off the job. Tony, my man! Who the hell are you? Your biggest fan! How you doing, everybody? I'm Morton Downey Jr. In Predator 2, I play a gorilla-like street reporter by the name of Anthony Pope. Well, Morton was um, sort of quite the celebrity pre-Jerry Springer character at the time, and and he had that a very he had an outrageous TV show. He would bring people on who were, who were deliberately abrasive and political and loud and, and then he would attack them on the camera and, and scream at them. It was all play acting, it was all made up. He makes quite a splash in the film and he's definitely the guy you want to, you know, punch out. Hey, more victims, more mutilation! Fuck you! Kevin Edmund was the, the guy in Hollywood who did all the big stuff. He did Predator, he did, um, what's the movie with the giant? I played Harry and Harry and the Hendersons. Harry and the Hendersons he'd done. And he spent really a lot of his time, you know, manipulating these suits and there was no one really like him. I did a movie called Without Warning, which was about an alien that comes to Earth to hunt man. <laughs> so I guess I've done Predator three or four times. He was very tall and he was super smart and he was a great, um, he had a great mime physicality. Most of my film career has been creature career, whereas most of my television, I've never played a monster on television, uh, except for the gong show when I played Frankenstein. He understood the shape and, and, and mime very well. We try other people in the suit and it just wouldn't be the same. He, he understood so clearly what it was and he was always in, in charge of that side of it. And so it was great for me not to, great for me to walk into a film where he had such a command of that. We love you, Kevin. You're letting me be on film. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're not in the movie. <laughs> I'm Stan Winston. This is John Rosengrant. This is Shane Mahan. They made me what and I am today. I want you to know that this man was four foot eleven before we met him. That's right. This is huh? this, these are these are the guys that make me the monster. Uh, is you that know? a camera? <laughs> that's that, that's the camera. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I've worked for the Stan Winston studio for over 20 years, and I was part of the team that actually created the first Predator, which led to our involvement in Predator 2. Probably the most important aspect of, uh, of all the work I do in uh, creating these creatures is the fact that I don't do any of it, and that uh, these are the people that actually do it and have been uh, making me look good for a lot of years. Shane Mahan, John Rosengrant, or the head of my art department, have been with me for too many years. Who are work and the life of it is from Richard Landon in the back there, who's the head of the mechanical department. So we have the aspect of the art that it takes 
to make the creature and the art that it takes to make the creature live. These are the most important aspects of all of the creatures we do. Broad concept the same. The difference is that this is a different individual. A different individual of the same species. As is a snake is a snake is a snake. But different snakes are different. Their colorings are different. Different parts of their characteristics, their facial structures, subtle differences. Now, to the average public, this predator will look like the same predator as Predator 1 because to the average public, they all look alike. Our involvement in Predator 2 was exciting because we got to further our characters and kind of flesh them out and, and figure out more of the Predator's culture because there was going to be multiples in this movie. Bring back the Predator, but bring back a new Predator. Make him be a little bit more dynamic than the first. Give back the audience what they saw originally, but give them a little bit more. Since he'll be in the movie more, he needs to have more character. He needs to have more life in his face. We, we had the fortunate first film to learn what we would like to do better. And now, fortunately, we have the second film, and we can do those things that we weren't able to do in the first film. They knew the film was going to be made, so he'd been working on it. I want to say, I think it was three months, somewhere around that, on, on Predator 2. So you're building and creating all that. Then when you go to the set, your, your, your duties become making sure that the suit is maintained, looks artistically correct, that at the time it was Kevin Peter Hall inside the suit, that he's comfortable. And then you're there puppeteering his face when his mask is off because you're articulating his brows and the exterior mandibles. It was Kevin's eyes with contact lenses inside. It was a, a very tight-fitting mask that would cinch down around his eyes. And then you were going to see a lot more of the Predator in the second one. And be it whether it's in dark situations or not, it, was, it still had to be very carefully regulated. The last thing you want to do is see a really huge guy walking, clambering around in, you know, in, in a giant suit. In, in creating the suits, we, we had to do it slightly differently this time than we did the first time around. First time around, a lot of the armor that was on the Predator was part of his suit. So he put the whole thing on and most of it was intact. Because we were going to create many Predators that had to look different, we ended up uh, having only basic pieces of armor on him, the whole chest and the whole harness that holds the gun pack. All. That became separate. And I think it created uh, a more realistic look because I, I think in Predator 2 we're going to spend more time looking at these characters than in the first movie, so it's better to have all those separate and kind of moving and functioning and would actually clip on. And then by having the Predator bodies without the armor on them, the naked chests, it allowed us for the background ones or the ones that would be seen later, you could augment them by putting different armor on in a mix and match fashion. On Predator 2, I just remember us going through cases and cases of uh, Predator blood. It was an interesting mix of the Siloam sticks, glow sticks, that when you, you break them and you, you, all the ingredients would then go into a cup with KY jelly. And that would give us the pasty, glowing blood. So he gets wounded many times in this. So there was just times on set where we were just mixing up gops of this stuff, putting it all over. Then you'd have to, in between takes, you'd have to mix up another set of it because it would only last for a finite amount of time. That's how the blood was done in the first one as well. Stuff that you, they used to break off and go to raves with or whatever they would do was uh, the Predator's blood. now <clears throat> shooting Predator 2 in Los Angeles rather than the jungles of Palenque, Mexico, makes our job much easier. Uh, we're home. <laughs>